September bullet journal plan with me video. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Anna, and today we'll create the first full setup of this year. I've been looking forward to this so much, so I wanted to go with a very traditional full forest theme with some foxes and warm colors. This could kind of be a remake of one of my older themes, but it's actually pretty different from that. So I don't know if you could call it a remake, but I hope you'll enjoy this as much as I did nevertheless. Anyway, we really have a lot to go through today, so let's jump right into the first painting that will go in the September cover calendar spread. So we'll start today by walking through this pretty detailed forest gouache painting. This is definitely one of the most, if not the most, time-consuming paintings I've done a whole year. So I'll definitely need to speed up some parts of this process, but I'll still try to explain you all the different steps. So you'll have an idea of how to approach a painting like this at home and create something very similar. We'll start this painting from a pencil sketch, and I used quite a bit of time for this today. So I really wanted to sketch out some of these different parts here to get a good idea of what we're trying to paint and how these different details would tie together. For me, the difficult part about painting forests are always the weirdest parts that you don't really pay attention to. Like for example, how does the forest floor look like? Or what's going on in the lower parts of the trees? How do they connect with the crowd and stuff like that? For me, those are the type of details you never think about before you'll need to actually draw or paint something. And I think the best way to get past some mental blocks like that is just to study pictures of actual forests. Oftentimes, what happens is that you realize there are so many different kinds of forests that what you paint to the lower part doesn't really matter that much. And pretty much any kinds of plants, leaves and overall scribbles will do. All these pencil lines will be covered, by the way, so you don't really need to worry about them. I wanted the fox here to be the main highlight of this picture, and I tried to do some things to really draw more attention to it. Like leave the area around it a little bit emptier, and focus most of the other details to the outer edges of the painting. We'll also try to draw some attention to it with the color choices, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But now it was time to take out the gouache paints and I'll do my best to list all the colors I'm using to this screen so you get a little bit better idea of which colors I'm mixing for each part. Also, all the tools used in this video will be listed in the description. So I decided to start here from the background, which will kind of be the theme of this painting process. So we are basically painting all the further details first and then moving forward and choosing darker colors step by step. So the first thing was to paint the area between the trees and I wanted this upper left corner to be the lightest part of the painting and then we are darkening the colors a little bit when we are moving further from it. In general, when we are working with gouache, these first layers don't really matter because all we're trying to do is laying down a background color on top of which we can then start to build all the finer details. So try not to be super hard on yourself in these first steps. A painting like this will definitely go through an ugly phase before we get to the other side and everything starts to make a little bit more sense. But now you can see how immediately we're starting to build some contrast with these dark tree trunks. We'll add some lights and shadows to this later, so now all you want to do is lay down a basic idea of which colors go where, and if something needs to be darkened or lightened later, we can absolutely do that. I did the same thing for the crown here, so this first background layer can be pretty dark and it doesn't matter if it looks a little bit messy for now. Then after that we can jump back to the top part and start building some crunches and leaf layers. 
I was kind of trying to create this sunlight effect to this painting. So these first leaf layers will be a little bit lighter. And I also wanted to include some orange and red tones here. Then every layer after this will get a little bit darker and you can really start to see the forest almost coming to life at this stage. I was trying to mix the color tones I was using here and mainly created these branches and leaves with just some simple tapping motions. Then after the top part we are doing pretty much the same thing for the crown and here I was trying to leave this brighter area to the center so I think that will also help to draw some attention to the fox that will sit here in the center of the picture and I also wanted the area behind the fox to be pretty dark so the orange tones will eventually stand out really nicely against it. Then it's finally time to start adding some color also to the main details of the painting. So the mushrooms, the tree trunk in the middle and eventually the fox are finally getting some color too. The fox was surprisingly difficult to paint with gouache and it took me a while to figure out a technique for it. Again, the first goal here is to pretty much just cover all the white we still have here. So I started with some brighter orange layers but quickly realized that we needed some more muted and grayish tones to make the fur a little bit more realistic and to create some shadows. Sometimes it might be a good idea to clean your brush a little bit in between and kind of smooth out some of those strokes with only a little bit of water in your brush. I think doing that definitely helped me here and I used it in other parts of this painting too when we were adding details to the mushrooms, trees and some other parts too. So it kind of works as a smudging technique when there are lines that you kind of want to smooth out a little bit. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this painting took me a lot of time. I think maybe up to six hours even. And most of it was spent in these last polishing phases. I think it might be helpful to choose a small portion of the painting to work at at a time and then move on to somewhere else to add the small dots to create more lights and shadows. Now we are also working with a much smaller brush than we did in the beginning and it will help to make everything in this stage a little bit more precise. If you feel like your colors are not really showing up or they blend to the background, I recommend trying to use almost black shade on the lighter areas and sometimes close to white on the darker areas. I think that might help you to get a good idea of how much you'll need to add contrast between different colors to make them show up. Eventually, I also wanted this fox to stand out even more against the background, so I decided to add this almost halo around it by adding some light yellow color along the outline of the fur. And I think this definitely made it show up a lot more. I was actually thinking to add some sun rays to this painting, starting from the upper left corner and kind of highlighting the fox a little bit, but I was too afraid to mess everything up with it. So I think I might try to add that on a computer instead, but here I just tried to add some glow to some of these details to create a little bit more illuminated appearance. But then we're slowly reaching the final look of this painting. 
if you're wondering, this will be part of the new fall collection in my shop. I don't have an exact date for the collection yet, but it will be available most likely in the very beginning of September. If you want to know exactly when it goes live, I do have a newsletter on my shop that you can join. And I promise I only send newsletters when there's a sale or new collection going live. And you often get some extra discounts for being part of it. So no weekly spam, I promise. But anyway, now we finally have this first painting ready to go. I really hope those of you who have been wanting to see some more detailed gouache paintings will really enjoy this one. But now it was just time to attach this to the journal and finish up the rest of this spread. I felt like changing things up a little bit here and decided to use this first spread also for the monthly calendar. Somehow I felt like since we went through all the trouble for the painting, it was just fair to make this spread a little bit more important, I guess. So I started by first attaching this brown dot paper that's from my Archer and Olive notepad. And then I went ahead and wrote out the September title to the top. I feel like this title definitely needed a darker outline so that this spread wouldn't be completely overpowered by the darkness of the painting. And then after that, we are going to set up just a very basic calendar on top of this brown paper. I was going through my paint collection and chose some full appropriate colors for this theme. So we'll use some orange, green and red tones, which I think complemented the brown paper and the decorations in this theme pretty well. But after that, we are finally done with this first cover monthly calendar spread. And then let's move on to some more monthly planning. I have a specific spread for the overall planning like this every month in my bullet journal that will help me to set a focus and make some sort of big picture plan for the whole month. But before we get to all that, let's first start with some decorations. I made this small Dutch door thing in the middle here and we're gonna paint on top of this to create the center flower pattern to the page. I love to create pattern designs for fall because they let you combine all the different beautiful fall colors together and there are so many ideas for flowers or leaf branch designs to use for them. So we're going to start by applying this dark green color all over the center part. If you want to mix a green shade like I did here, it might be a little bit difficult to get the color super even and smooth all over. But the pattern we'll throw on top will take the attention away from any unevenness in the background. So after the background layer had tried, I started to paint these different flower branches by using some yellow ochre, then orange, red and green shades. Painting all of these actually took so much longer than I anticipated. So just be prepared if you want to do something similar. I only filmed these first few ones because I basically just kept repeating the same branches throughout the whole area here. Also, the branches definitely don't need to be exactly identical. Mine definitely have a different amount of leaves and other mistakes in them too. But again, in a pattern like this, there's so much going on that you naturally don't really focus on any small details when you look at it. And in the end, everything somehow comes together and looks much more even than it should. After all the branches and flowers, I also wanted to add these small stars and sparkles as the finishing touch for this, which is a great way to fill some of the empty spaces. And after that, we have this pretty flower pattern ready in the middle of the page. Now we are ready to start setting up the rest of this planning layout and I started here with a simple September plan title. 
I wanted to use this first page just to make some overall weekly plans. So I used these four boxes for that. I know it probably wasn't the smartest move to do all that work for the pattern and then cover half of it with these boxes, but I really liked the look of these here over the center. And if you don't own any brown paper, you could do this with white paper as well and just maybe add a small shadow in the bottom edge of the boxes to make them stand out a little bit. So I'll use these to make some overall plans for each week of September. I usually do this in the beginning of the month and I think it's a great way to tie your plans into an actual timeline rather than just have a list of things you want to achieve in some point. So I'll have a small space here to write a short open plan for each week and then list a few of the most important things on the right side. But then let's move on to the second page and here we'll just set up some boxes that you can use for any specific project or some more overall thoughts and plans again. I'll use this upper box to write about the focus for the month, which for me is often just an opportunity to get a little bit more clear of my own expectations. And it also makes it easier to come back to this page later to see if we were able to stick to the plan and those expectations later in the month too. I use these check-ins to do exactly that. So it often works as an easy way for me to keep myself accountable if I wasn't as productive as I should have been. Then we still have this whole space in the middle here behind the Dutch door, which you could use in any way that suits you. If you like to track habits or daily mood in your bullet journal, this would be a great place for that. But I think I'll just use this for some end of the year planning. So I'll go to Finland again in the end of the year to see my family and there are some video and shop schedules that I'll need to arrange for that. So I thought that starting with all of that really early this year would save me from some extra stress later. Also, if you just started your new year in a university or a school, I think doing some sort of overall plan for the whole semester or at least list all the bigger things you'll need to get done in one place like this might be very helpful. But that's it for the overall planning section and now it's time to move on again and next we'll set up this bigger Dutch door layout that will include the weekly setup of September and some other stuff too. We'll start here by cutting out all the pages we need and I think I cut out four pages here in total. So we'll also have room for the first and last days of September, which are on the non full weeks. Anyway, I wanted to have a little bit more room towards the bottom edge of this spread for the illustration I had in mind. So the Dutch door is not exactly in the middle here. And then I just wanted to add this brown paper again to the first empty page here to make it stand out from the rest a little bit. I also decided to round the corners of these pages with my handy corner rounding tool. And then we're just gonna add some easy washi tape border to these pages, which is a completely optional step. I wanted to use this first brown page here for a small self-care section. So we'll start by making some space to do a little feeling check. You could choose to fill this at any point of the month. I think I'll probably write this in the beginning of September. And you could even treat this space as a small diary entry. Then I wanted to use the bottom part of this section to just list some self-care action ideas. But after that, let's move on to this right side page here, which will be for the first four days of September. The rest of the weeks will always have one whole spread, so you'll have a little bit more room if you feel like you need it, but I'm pretty sure that just having this one page for these first four days will be more than enough for me. 
I usually like to include some empty notes sections and places to write about the most important tasks of the week because writing down stuff like that always makes me more focused and stick with my plans much better. Having all these different colors looked a little bit weird at first, but I think after we have all the decorations ready on this spread, it kind of tied all these different colors together a little bit more. But now let's flip over to the next page here, and this will be for the first full week of September. Last month I used this weekly task list approach. So instead of writing a task list for each day separately, I have this bigger list of important things that need to get done in some point of the week. I'm not someone who necessarily checks my bullet journal every day, so this weekly approach has worked very well for me and it also allows some flexibility in your schedule. If you have a situation where you can move tasks around or you might have a task that takes more than one day to finish. But other than that, I think there is again plenty of room here to use for some other things you might want to have in your weekly setups. So I decided to include a meal idea list here and then we'll also have some room for each day to write down any appointments or deadlines you'll need to remember. I use this brown craft sticker paper for the boxes, which is super useful because you don't need to glue all these pieces individually. I'll probably set up something very similar for the other weeks and then the last five day week we'll again go to the last one page of this setup. So that means now we're finally ready to move on to create the decorations to this spread. I wanted to use a little bit different technique here, so instead of painting this with gouache, we'll draw out the outlines first with a black pen and then color the illustrations with watercolors. So I wanted to create some sort of full flower field here with a small fox as the main focus again because we definitely needed one more fox with this theme. This one has a lot of details again so I sketched all of them out with a pencil first and then just went over the lines with a black pen. For stuff like this, I usually like to use a pretty thin pen that helps to keep the lines a little bit more dainty and precise. Also, something you can think about while drawing is to avoid straight and closed off lines. I feel drawings like this often look a little bit better if you leave small gaps to the shapes and add some small uneven scribbles here and there. But after sketching out all these different leaves, flowers, mushrooms and other stuff, we still have a lot of space here in the middle. So I decided to use this to write this fall quote I found which says autumn killed the summer with the softest kiss. I used the same font here that I've been using in this theme this far and I leave the name of the original font to this screen that I kind of used as my main inspiration here. Overall this whole thing ended up looking much more detailed than I thought in the beginning but I kind of liked the almost cottage core or storybook vibe that this started to have and I decided to lean into that style with the coloring as well. So after we have all the outlines ready, I took out my watercolors and started to add some simple layers here. 
I think the most difficult part here was painting the fox and I kind of struggled with it a little bit. It definitely didn't end up being my best coloring job, but I think the rest of the illustration kind of took some attention away from it as well. So I tried to add some different brown and orange tones also to some of the leaves so that this would have a little bit more fallish appearance and otherwise just use some different tones of green. In the end, I also decided to take the details to the top part of the page because it kind of looked pretty unbalanced with all these different details here in the bottom. So I decided to finish this spread with some more stars and dots to kind of balance out everything a little bit more. So yeah, this definitely ended up being quite busy spread for my taste, but I kind of liked it for this theme especially. I'm just a little bit worried that everything starts to look too crowded when I fill all the weeklies and stuff, but I guess that doesn't really matter. And it's always fun to try out some different styles. Anyway, now we only have one more spread to set up and I wanted to keep this one very simple after all these time-consuming decorations. So I started here with these two brown papers again and I'll use this spread for the monthly review or reflection. I always fill these in the end of the month and I like to include some open questions and spaces to write out my thoughts about the month and it can also work as a space to reflect on some other stuff a little bit. Like for example, write about the things you're grateful for in your life and something I also like to do on these pages is to list some of my favorite things which are always so fun to look back to since they remind you of a very specific time of your life. So yeah, just a very functional spread and since this video was already getting pretty long, I decided to not do any decorations for this spread and instead I think I'll just decorate it with some stickers or washi tapes later. However, when we have this review spread ready that finally finishes this whole September layout, I really hope you like this theme, I had so much fun setting this up and also let me know what you think about this darker background. I was thinking that we could use this at least for the fall and winter season to change things up a little bit. But other than that, if this was your first video of this channel and you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing and also leave this video a like if you liked it. I guess I should be asking that more often to please the YouTube algorithm. But I guess that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.